don't know whether you're uh, aware of this, but um, last weekend when you um, had Luke Cow and Dickie involved, there was a lot of talk on social media about the protocols regarding concussion, whatever. Can you just speak to us regarding the protocols that players have to come through? Because a lot of people were questioning how a player seemingly spark out can then be on the bench and, and come on and play a game seven days later. Yeah, there's, there's strict protocols uh, that our medical team follow that, that World Rugby have put in place. Um, that the players have to have to go through, and with Luke, we went and got a world-renowned specialist in concussion to have a look at, at him, and, and he cleared him as, as well. So he'd, he'd he'd gone through all the all the protocols, and for people who don't really know a lot about concussion, every player is affected differently. Sometimes a player can get, as you said, can be knocked out um, and recover and be perfect in a, in a very short time, and other players. Might might get a very slight knock, and it can take them a while to to recover from that. So there's no there's no um, actual uh, in terms of cases. There's, there's no similarity between uh, what uh, players go through. And all I can say is that I 100% follow the advice of the medical team, and they go through the protocols. And when a player's passed fit, then then it, I think he's considered for selection. So. Um, I can tell you, there's definitely no pressure from the rugby side, and uh, and if he's not right, then um, then he he wouldn't have been been selected. Um, so uh, I don't know, I don't know how much more I can can talk about that. I mean, if if there are, I I don't know. I mean, all I can say is that there's people who are a lot more educated than me who are making these decisions. So. Uh, Back row combination looks really, really interesting. How excited to, are you to get to, to see those three go together? Yes, yeah, uh, there's a, there's a huge amount of competition within the back row, and uh, I spoke to them all uh, last night and just said, "Look, you've got a license from me to go and get your hands on the ball and 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 express yourself." So. Um, I said you're probably not renowned as, as line out experts, but um, is there? But you've got to play to your strengths, and obviously we're, we're strong defenders and great ball carriers, and so yeah, it's a, it's a it's a different aspect to look at, but it's, it's pretty exciting, and I'm look, really looking forward to seeing how they go as a trio. Can I ask you about the qualities of the man sitting next to you, Ian Henderson, who captain the side. Why him? Well, it's his experience, being on, being being a, 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 as a previous Lions tourist. Uh, Captain of Ulster, Captain Ireland as well. So um, he just brings a calm uh, approach to it, uh, and he's well aware there's you know, there's other experienced players in the side and, and leaders in the side that are going to be there to support him. So you know, I think there are a couple of other players that we could we could have looked at, but I thought uh, Ian was a, an obvious choice for us given you know his experience and stature in the game. And uh, spoke to Andy Farrell. Uh, during the Six Nations, and you know he was full of praise of Ian and his leadership and and what he was bringing to the island side. So it sort of was a natural fit for us and a great honour for him too. Can I ask you about the opposition? Um, obviously, the Lions were pretty young and inexperienced. The side that the Sharks have named isn't massively stronger. Can you get meaningful work out of a potentially one-sided game? Well, I think the, the focus on at the moment is us concentrating on ourselves and we're not sort of looking too much at the opposition. Yeah, they're missing probably eight players that are in the Springbok camp, um, so they've got some youngsters. So I think they'll go out there with an attitude of wanting to throw the ball around, take a few risks, try and test us from that from that aspect. But you know, we're definitely just focusing on our own, own preparation and, and we can't really... Look at too much of the opposition, and you know we've just got to be. Uh, there were things from the other night that we were pleased at, and, and some inaccuracies, um, things that we need to fix up. I'm really pleased with our line out. Uh, sorry, our line defence. You know, close to the line, we 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 had kept them um, out from you know getting their big men across across the goal line from their pick and go stuff. So we've got to, there's lots of things we've still got to work on, and and we can't sort of worry too much about who we're playing. Can I just ask you one finally about South Africa? There's talk of Peter Steph de Toy being in the second row. Um, 
Would that surprise you, taking one of the world's best back rowers away from his best position te- uh, potentially? Oh, he's a world class player, there's no doubt about it. But he has he has had a lot of a lot of time in the second row. He has played there before, so I think for them with the you know potential uh, with Snyman and um, Estabeth maybe carrying an injury as well. I think for them they'll be potentially looking at getting their best players on the park. So uh, you know if they if they move them up to the second row, that gives them potentially more mobility and and they've got some quality loose forwards to to be able to to fit in and and, and cover them. So um, you know, whatever team South Africa put out, they're going to be tough, and we and we we realise that. Ian, can I just ask you about the, the honour of being the captain for the Lions uh, for this game on Wednesday evening? How are you feeling about it? Yeah, um, incredibly excited. Um, looking forward to it. Um, the lads have been preparing really well for it. Um, off the back of that game at the weekend, uh, we had a real good session out of this morning. Um, looking forward to another one this afternoon. So we'll um, uh, got our heads together and got a good game plan in place. So um, uh, like excitement's probably my overwhelming uh, feeling. Thank you very much. Keith, Keith Brownie from Sky, please. Hi, just a, it's a question for, for Warren, please. Warren, I just missed the very start. Could you just talk about the three debutants, please, and, and just what your, your thinking is with, with them coming into the lineup? Yeah, with, with those guys, it's just the message to them is just go, go and play your own game. And uh, it's, it's a great honour and, and incredible excitement for them to play their, their first game for, for the Lions. And uh, it's just, for me, it's about not trying to put them under any pressure at all. You know, they've got a lot of things to worry about. They'll be a little bit nervous and stuff. So just go and enjoy the occasion. That's the, that's definitely the message for them. And I'm guessing that there's there's places up for grabs for the for the test match at the, at the end of the tour. Honestly, I'm not even trying to think too much ahead about uh, uh, the test sides, uh, just letting sort of one game at a, at a time. And then and then as we start to get, get close, I mean, I think that, from a coaching perspective, it's uh, it's a great position to be in because we've got so much competition within the squad and 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 uh, players already putting the hand up. And as Ian alluded to, I mean the, the players have really been working hard um, off off the pitch in terms of knowing their roles and calls and stuff. And that's been absolutely outstanding from from that perspective. It makes everyone's job so much easier from the amount of hard work that, that the players have been doing. So. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, it, we're, st- we're starting to talk and joke a little bit amongst the staff, sort of make up of the the test size and how that's going to look. And some players have been putting their hand up and uh, and have had some 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 good performances in the first couple of games, and and hopefully that continues to make our job really tough. And and what just finally from me, I know you guys have have got a very hectic schedule, but will the will, will the English lads be able to catch up or watch the, watch the football at all on Wednesday? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's there's already been a bit of excitement in the within the camp and the English boys uh, following the football. It's you know it's fantastic. They have got a semi final and and uh, you know from our from our point of view, it'd be great for them to get the final and win it. But you know, it'd be uh, just because it's a different sport, it doesn't mean we don't follow follow them and and and, and support them. And so you know, to Gareth and the team, we just wish them all the best. Thank you. Hi Warren, just just on that um, topic of, of balancing your squad with the tests in, in mind, four years ago in match three, the Crusaders game, I think a, a huge number of those guys, about 13 of them, went on to start the first test. Are you finding four years later there are more players in contention for the test at this stage of the tour than there were in New Zealand in 17? Uh, that's, that's not really something I've thought about, but there is definitely some, some uh, you know, a lot. Of, there is a lot of competition, so... Yeah, you know, that's it's a good point to make that there is. Uh, if you look at the back three, you look at the the uh, you know all positions and um, loose forwards, and in particular those those two positions, the amount of competition there is um, is huge. So there's going to be um, you know some long discussions about where we are fr- from that point of view, and and we'll probably as as we get a little bit closer, you know, start looking at you know potential combinations, not putting out a test team. Um, uh, that we think maybe in the first test against South Africa, there be definitely some mix and matching because uh, you know you, you don't want to show your hand too too early as well. 
And one area I think that, that so many people are intrigued by is, is the midfield. We saw Finn and Owen play together on the weekend. You've got Dan, who's been in great form, coming back in, in at 10 with, with Bundyaki and Elliot Daly. On Elliot Daly, you, you must be really pleased with his impact off the bench against the Lions and what he can offer in that 13 channel. Yeah, I, I thought he was outstanding coming off the bench. I, I thought, uh, not just from an attacking perspective, I thought he defended really well too. He sort of got up the end. Um and look, he, we know he can cover on the wing and fullback, but I, I think sort of as, as you're getting a little bit older and more experienced, I think that's definitely a position for him for, for the future. Um, it gives us a left foot option as well. It gives us a long goal kicking um, range from, from that, that side of this game. So look, I'm looking forward to seeing how that um, that trio go together. Sort of, um, yeah, it's uh, again, gives us sort of different options and and as we wait for um, you know, um, Robbie Henshaw to sort of come back from that slight uh, hamstring strain. And just finally from me to, to Ian, if I can. Um, Ian, how, how are you finding it compared to, to 17? Does it feel as if there is a huge amount of competition for places and everyone feels they've got a, they've got a shot of playing in that first test? Um, yeah, I think it's, it's incredibly diff- uh, different. Different. Um, in a lot of different aspects on and off the field but I feel like as a as a whole we, we've gelled together the extra time we probably got um, having more numbers in Jersey I think has been incredible for us uh, the, the test sort of team if you like that, that people talk about so much hasn't really come into a lot of players thoughts definitely hasn't come into my thoughts really at the minute obviously there's so much before then to, for us to consider in terms of uh, in terms of players and getting stuff ready and and ensuring you're getting your stuff right so so that that for us is a fair bit down the line and and, and we're concentrating on, on what we've got right in front of us thanks guys hey ian how's it going uh congratulations cheers um just wanted to start off you've only kind of you know been named a couple of hours ago but i just know about that big ulster connection with south african players have you met us from lads already and um yeah, is that kind of strong connection between Ulster and South Africa? A lot of lads over there uh, through the years and even, you know, even the last few seasons as well. Yeah, there's there's obviously um, a fair few lads over here and I've been chatting to a few of them um, briefly, obviously, with, uh, with the current restrictions in place. We haven't been um, able to maybe get out and about as we as we would in other, other years, but uh, um, I've been keeping in, in uh, close contact with them um, just general chit chat, uh, well wishing and, and and hoping everyone's keeping well over here from their side of things but uh but no definitely having um played with a fair few South Africans before uh, it gives a good insight into their their mindset going into games and 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 I think we'll definitely take value from that um a, a st- story that kind of cropped up to me where that I remember this morning was you know, when, when the captaincy was kind of announced, was that Marcel Cotsi story that he was telling us on, on House of Rugby when he was talking about when he came up against you in 2012 and he was saying, looking at you, he said, there's no way this guy could be a rugby player. Um, you know, like, it's, it's an incredible journey you've had as well, isn't it? Like, it's 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 just a great culmination of, you know, uh, look at where you are nine years later now as well. Yeah, Marcel's actually one of the guys I've been in touch with. Uh, after swapping jerseys with him in 2012, I think... Him and myself have come 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 a long way, um. But no, it's definitely um, it's just one example of of sort of I suppose the the friendships you make and how you end up bumping into each other, be it in an international game or club games or or as this time it happens to be in a in a in a lion sort of environment. So look, it's um all those things are incredibly uh, incredibly exciting, and I think add a, add a fair bit of flavour if you like to the tour. Cheers. Ian. Uh, hi Warren. Um, the talk about Alan and Jones getting called back for the tests uh, raised a few eyebrows last week. Has there been any contact with him or, or update on that? Uh, I, I don't know. Not not from me. At the moment, I think the med- medics have been talking to him. He's he's on a program, so uh, it's like I said. Uh, made some comments about it that it, it it may be unlikely, but you know he, he's the sort of person that. Uh, we'll do everything he can to to get himself back to full fitness. Uh, I mean, the, the prognosis wasn't quite as bad as they as they first thought. So, but all I can say is, look, it's 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 a dislocated shoulder, and so that's it takes a lot of work to get something like that back. And 
we wouldn't even consider him unless he was 100% fit and was able to take full contact. So that's it's not something that we're, we're focusing on at the moment. It, it's sort of to the side and and, um, and as that gets potentially closer, it's, some, it's something we may consider. But it's, you know, I mean, our whole focus is on the squad that's out here at the moment and, and preparing for these matches. And then if you could speak a little bit about um, Gareth Davis. Obviously, he's waited four years for that first line experience and now he's got his first start this week. There's a fair bit of noise, you know, four years going New Zealand. What, what does that mean to him and you after sort of some of the stick that you, you both received four years ago? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the stick from four years ago was uh, because we brought players in that were, were, were close and uh, and we did the same thing in 2013, but we, we f- flew players from, from Argentina to come in there and and uh, as a result of that, I mean, they, they didn't quite get up to speed because they were still suffering from, from jet lag and having to travel all that distance. So, you know, we made a different decision uh, four years ago. Yeah, and there was some some, some criticism. Um, so absolutely delighted for Gareth. You know, he's he's a player that I've got a lot of time for and he's a different kind of player. He's got a, the thing about him is that he's a very, uh, very powerful player uh, Person in terms of the way that he defends, he, he's got a great try scoring record. Um, saw him score the other night, I think, in, in forty test matches or something, forty odd test matches for, for Wales. He scored nineteen or twenty tries. So, um, and so the message to him is to, to not. Uh, I think all our, our three nines are, are different, and so to play to his strengths and and he, like I said, he he, has, he does bring different strengths to the game. He gets off the line defensively, put puts the opposition teams under a lot of pressure um, and he's got the ability to run some great lines and support lines and like I said scores scores tries so you know it's to go out there and play his own game and play to his strengths Cheers Warren uh, Hi Warren um, I just wanted to wonder if you could clarify something you said uh, just, just now to Chris Jones um, when he was asking about uh, how four years ago there were 13 of the test team playing together by game three. You, 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 said, um, you, you said to him, you don't want to show your hand too early. Does that mean that in either of the games at the end, before the test matches, so the Stormers game or the South Africa A game, you won't be using that as like a dress rehearsal for what you see as your test team? The assumption is that the test team would come together in one of those games when you say that, is that a misapprehension? It's just a misapprehension. I mean, I didn't even know that that stat, so that was by mistake. Uh, <laughs> if we put thirty into the players out, it wasn't it wasn't intentional. Uh, it just ha- it happened to be that way. So um, I want this this group of men to feel that everyone has an opportunity, particularly right up until the test matches, and and we don't, we won't um, we won't be sort of. Uh, showing our hand in terms of what we think a test side will be. And, and the message four years ago was to the players who played on the Tuesday night before the first test that we hadn't selected the first test team and there were still positions and spots up for grabs. And I think a couple of players played well that night and, and were selected in the first test team. So that's, and I think I think as, as players, they want to hear that message. They want to hear that we haven't made up our mind and, and everyone still has an opportunity. And I think that's, that's really important for the whole squad. And you see, you see that approach as as uh, more important than the, the other approach, which would be to get your team out playing together for a full hit out the week beforehand. Um, I, I don't think there's any right or wrong way to to look at it. Um, like I said, we will will potentially look at maybe the week before um, what we think some of the combinations may look like and mix and mix and match a little bit. So. Um, yeah, I don't think there's, like I said, there's not, there's not any any right way of doing it. Um, yeah, we've spoken about giving everyone a start in the first three games. We've done that, and then, like I said, it's not. We'll, we'll look at how these first three games have gone, and then we'll start thinking a little bit further down the line and, and looking at the opposition and who we're playing against and and how how things are, how things are going in training and how the players are putting their hand up, not just from a game perspective, but also how they're preparing and training too. Okay, thank you very much. Hi Ian, Dave Kelly here. Um, 
Congratulations on the honour. History may recall it's sometimes a dubious honour. Uh, apologies for putting that in your head. How do you remove that from your head uh, heading into uh, this week? And also, can you just maybe explain what you hope to bring to the to the whole occasion, the build up and the game itself? Thanks. Uh, thanks for that comment. Um, yeah, no, no. I, I think like all the players, as as Gat said earlier on, there's so many leaders throughout the squad. Um, so many of these guys are leaders amongst their countries and their clubs. So. I feel a, a fair sense as my job of a captain is, is to ensure that those guys are able to express themselves as best possible. Um, and that's not ensuring that I'm the one doing all the talking or, or doing all the directing. Most of these guys probably have a fair, uh, a better idea of what they're doing than, than what I do. So so I'm happy enough to let these guys lead, uh, do their own thing, ensure that they can bring out their strengths. And, and ultimately, the, the quicker we can gel together the, the uh, in terms of the, the game, the better we'll see the performance. Um, so, look, look. I think, uh, I think f- for me personally, I'm just incredibly honoured to be able to do this, and and I'm, I'm looking forward to it, and I'm incredibly excited about leading uh, like what I think is an incredible bunch of guys. Yeah. Hi, Warren. Um, can I just go back to a comment you made earlier about t- t- telling some of the loose forwards to go play their own game? Is that the message to the guys in the backs as well? And how do you balance that message with making sure people don't go off script because they're all sort of desperate to make an impression? Yeah, what I mean by that is that if you look at those players, they're, they're, they're very strong defenders and they're exciting ball carriers and they've, they've all got footwork and stuff. And that's kind of what I meant by that. Sometimes you get a different balance in a loose forward trio where... You're picking a line out specialist, uh, someone plays a little bit tighter, maybe maybe hits more rucks than that. And so these players all have pretty similar attributes. I mean, some of them are, they're going to have to mix and match a bit with making sure they do the, the graph work. But like I said, is the, the message was make sure you make sure to all these players that you play to your strengths. Kind of, we don't want to pigeonhole them and we want to give players the opportunity. and um, to play to their strengths, and, and for some, it's getting hands on the ball and 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 using that ability. Other players, um, you know, are very strong at the breakdowns, very strong from a defensive perspective, you know, jackling and turning the ball over and stuff. So, yeah, it's not, it's not. Don't read too much into into that. It's just kind of like saying they've they've got a license to to go and 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 be positive in the way they play, but. Ensuring that we also sort of stay within our structures and systems and, and things, and as the game loosens up, there, there, there will be opportunities for them. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you, gents. Cheers. Thanks, guys.